Now that the full excitement of the NHL playoffs has uh, hit the uh, fever pitch, especially after Game 4, where Vegas knocked off Montreal last night, uh, in this break, uh, we're going back to look at a little bit of history of the Stanley Cup, where the smallest community ever to win the hardware took it in dramatic fashion. Now, th- this podcast will cover maybe a team you've never heard of, but it is uh, has resonated in Canada for uh, nearly 120 years. Now, in 1906-07 campaign, after Montreal Wanderers had defeated the Ottawa Senators at the end of the, two, the 1906 season and had captured the uh, Stanley Cup, it was too late in the season to face the Western champions. Thus, it was decided by Cup trustees that Montreal would face the Canoro Thistles, previously known as the Rat Portage Thistles, in a two-game total goal series midway through the ECAHA season. Uh, in front of a packed house in the Montreal suburb of Westmount, the game was dotted at two during halftime, before Tom Phillips, who had scored the previous game for Canora, potted two more for a 4-2 upset victory. Game 2 was a physical affair, with the Wanderers attempting to slow down their speedy opponents. Now, drawing 55 minutes in penalties, compared to the Thistles' 30, Montreal couldn't quite come back, and Canora became the smallest town at a population of 4,000 people to capture the Stanley Cup with an 8-6 victory. Two months later, Canora traveled to Brandon, Winnipeg, to defend her title, and the Thistles handled the Westerners, winning 8-6 and 4-1. Now, the, the idea about the Thistles, this came right after they had a Stanley Cup challenge, uh, challenge the Wanderers. They had played New Glasgow, Nova Scotia at Montreal, winning 10-3 and 7-2. Now, with the, uh, the challenge, uh, challenge game, uh, because Montreal was host, they could uh, play at their popular rink at the Montreal Arena. But Kanoa had a very interesting lineup with some Hall of Famers and some uh, what they call high pay, uh, price uh, substitutes. Now, the Kanoa team included Eddie Giroux, Art Ross, Cy Griffiths, Tom Hooper, Billy McGimsey, Roxy Bordreau, Tom Phillips, of course, who was the captain, and get us to substitute Joe Hall, of all people, uh, legendary Joe Hall, and Russell Phillips. Now, uh, in that exhibition uh, game in uh, Ottawa that also followed up, the uh, loss A3 to Ottawa. Harry Smith scored four goals, and Harry Westwick scored three for Ottawa. Now, in this game, uh, McGr- uh, Gimsey suffered a career-ending shoulder injury, a very devastated blow to the squad as well. Now, talking about that uh, uh, game against Brandon Wheat City at Winnipeg, uh, again, Giroux, Baudreau, Cy Griffiths, Harry Westwick, Fred Witch- Witchcroft, Alf Smith, Tommy Phillips, Tom Harper, and Russell Phillips in the first game, uh, Giroux, Baudreau, Griffiths, Westwick, Whitecroft, Alf Smith, Tommy Phillips, Tom Hopper, and, and Russell Phillips in the second uh, one. Now, the Wanderers did play uh, Kenora at uh, Winnipeg, and uh, they split the games 7-2 and 6-5, but Montreal won the total goal series uh, and eventually won the, uh, the Stanley Cup uh, yet again. Now, what's kind of bizarre with the Kenora Thistles? They had their, they were eligible to put their name on the Stanley Cup. Now, but they engraved their name, name of the team, inside the bowl of the Stanley Cup, saying the 1907 Thistles of Kenora. Now, the, the Wanderers were also eligible to put their name on the cup, and uh, it was uh, uh, very weird because the trophy's trustee, William Ford, presented again the Stanley Cup twice in that year. Uh, Wanderers decided to engrave their names on the cup and the following staff were eligible to have their names engraved on the cup for the Thistles. Billy McGimsey, Harry Westwick, Fred Whitcroft, Roxy Baudreau, Tom Phillips, Russell Phillips, Al Smith, Tom Hooper, Art Ross, Silas Griffiths, Joe Hall, who did not play, and Eddie Giroux. Coaching administrative staff included Fred Hudson, manager, James Link, coach, trainer, John McGivillery, uh, secretary, treasurer, and Lowry Johnson, president. Now, uh, the uh, 
Several players who were not part of the team would go over with the Stanley Cup in January 07. Harry Westwick, Fred Whitcroft, and Al Smith joined the team in March 07 to play against the Brandon Wheat City in the two playoff games. They also played in the Stanley Cup loss to the Wanderers. Now, several players left the team after winning the Stanley Cup. Art Ross and Joe Hall, and re who returned to play for Brandon. Kenora defeated Brandon in the two-game playoff for the Manitoba League title Stanley Cup. Now, Ross and Hall, of all things, played for Brandon in that series. Now, the inside of the bowl, uh, the old bowl, has the 1907 Thistles of Kenora uh, uh, designation. Now, 07 was considered one of the most important uh, years before the NHL because the amount of quality of teams across Canada, it was going to be a national title because of the new Glasgow games and the Brandon games. And again, these were traveling uh, challenges. And uh, the Eastern Canada Amateur Hockey Association that we're part, part of at the time included Ontario, so in case you're wondering any designation. And in this league, Ernie Russell with 42 goals had the big tally. So again, the 1907 Stanley Cup uh, run that season, again, a tremendous part of uh, uh, what is called pre-NHL history. And the individual uh, stories of the Kenora Thistles uh, players are available online. Just do a, a research. Uh, Google or whatever, but to me the Conor Thistles, uh, you probably wouldn't see it, but uh, I think they should try to find a way to promote that jersey. I love their jersey, but that's just that's just me. I love I love the old 1900s and 1910s uh, pro jerseys that uh, predated the NHL. So if you like what we're doing here, if you like the Stanley Cup uh, history, give us a like, comment, or subscribe. No matter what happens, the Stanley Cup, whoever wins, it's a celebration of hockey like it always has been. And that's been going on whew, uh, twice as long as I've been alive. So it's been, it's been there for, for you, the fans. Thanks for listening.